Okay, so the second presentation this morning I'm going to do, um, and it is entitled uh, Platforming, Deplatforming, and Replatforming. And what I want to um, uh, show you is a project that I did with uh, some people are actually here today in this room. Uh, we did this project at the University of Bologna at the Institute for Advanced Studies. Um, and what it is about is uh, concerns the idea of deplatforming. Uh, extremists um, around the world are increasingly being thrown off of social media. Um, and so I want to talk about the big question that I'm going to uh, try to answer is, is this effective? Is it good? Is it good for the, uh, for the platforms? For uh, Who does it benefit? Is it good for the platforms? Is it good for the extremists? Is it good for the internet? Is it good for society at large? So these are very large questions. Um, and I'm going to try to address them uh, and, give, and, give, and give some sort of partial answers. So th this, um, this, this talk has, has three parts to it. Uh, one concerns the turn to the right online more, more, more generally. Uh, this is what um, I call platforming. And, and it's the, the idea of, of how ex extremist internet celebrities are made. Um, then subsequently, once they have become extremist internet celebrities, they, uh, a lot of them recently were deplatformed, and, and I want to talk a little bit about that. And then I want to talk about their migration paths, where they went to, um, and, uh, and, and then how to map an alternative social media uh, e uh, ecology. Um, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that uh, as well in, in terms of replatforming. But first, I want to um, introduce you to um, Sof. Uh, Sof is a 15-year-old um, extremist internet celebrity. Uh, she um, uh, had a YouTube channel which had about 997 million, no, what was it? Um, Oh yeah, no, no, sorry. So nearly a million, a million subscribers. So she was uh, really uh, popular, um, and she uh, also had a Twitter account uh, as well that she didn't use as much. But the U she was basically a YouTuber, um, and I want to um, uh, show you a video. Um, I hope I can play it. That actually got her deplatformed. Um, one second. Uh, I should warn you that Soph um, it has, ex uh, uses quite disconcerting language. Looking to provoke a fight or flight reaction from people as you walk down the this street. This is her merchandise to start off with. expression on your parents' faces when they open your bedroom door to give you food? Get merch from Soph's de-radicalization mark for used souvenirs coming straight out of Little St. James Island. 25 bucks a pop. Go to bonfire.com slash store slash Soph, prepare your squibs and decorated guns, and make sure to blame me in your manifesto. Buy Soph. Now back to the video. Unfortunately, as you know, last month was Pride, which meant we all had to endure 30 days of AIDS-carrying pedophile victims patting themselves on the back for their lifestyles. I had an especially hard time considering I live in California, where there was a puddle of disease load waiting for me whenever I dared to step out of my house. However, there is a silver lining to this cloud of airborne herpes, a learning experience to be derived from that month-long fudge-packing fest. As I'm sure my highly observant audience has noticed, the LGBT community is keen on a accusing any and all critics of homophobia. It's obviously a tactic to effectively divert attention from the rates of STDs and pederasty involving homosexuals, but I think that the term phobic was picked for reasons more Machiavellian than you'd expect. I think they frame their opposition as fearful as opposed to anything else because that's what they want them to be. As Machiavelli said, it's better to be feared than to be loved. And whether you agree with that statement or not, I think it's safe to say that militant homosexuals agree with it out of necessity. Most of them are hedonists. 
utterly unable to achieve the love that a married heterosexual couple can, and in the face of that daunting truth, they convince themselves that being feared is preferable. What they fail to notice, or pretend not to know, is that their detractors feel not fear but disgust. And that's frustrating, because disgust doesn't fit into their narrative. This is also the key to understanding why they don't seem at all affected by the much more tangible threat of Islam. Despite their blatantly anti-homosexual credo, Muslims bond with the gays over one thing, lovelessness. Okay, that's enough. Oops. <laughs> Let's make sure we close that window. <laughs> So she um, was thrown off of uh, YouTube, um, and this is the the post uh, on the right hand side when she when she announced that. Um, and when you go to YouTube now and and and, uh, and click on the Pride and Prejudice um, link for the video, this is what you get, and this is what you're increasingly getting uh, on YouTube for this kind of uh, this kind of content. Um, so. Um, that was uh, um, a case. I mean, this is this is Facebook's terms. Uh, YouTube is, is, has different ones, but um, but people are being deplatformed. These extremists are being platformed uh, because they are this sort of new category uh, that uh, that Facebook put forward, and and this is the the notion of the dangerous individual, uh, and the dangerous ind individual um, is one who. Um, is a, a, has a, a bunch of uh, uh, things, but one is um, that they are uh, leading campaigns of sort of organized hate. So this is this is um, this is largely the, uh, the the rationale that's given by the platforms. So when um, in May 2019 there were a sort of series of deplatformings um, on Facebook in particular, but also on other social media platforms. Uh, what one read uh, both uh, on the extremist uh, on the extremist pages on Facebook, which which the, the announcement came about a half an hour before they were actually uh, actually thrown off. So they all sort of announced where they were going to, uh, and so um, they uh, announced that they were moving. A lot of them, in particular, were moving to to Telegram, uh, and it's it's a it's a an interesting piece of software, uh, Telegram. It was founded uh, by the same peop uh, developers who created uh, Vkontakte, uh, the Russian uh, social media platform, and they are—they uh, were threatened by the Russian state and uh, went into into hiding. And so they were also using this particular uh, uh, software, uh, this messaging, as an, as a um, means by which to to show that they can that they can do secure. Um, Messaging, so so they got an interesting reputation. Telegram is a very interesting object of study. Um, it is for um, what some of my colleagues here have called both for masked as well as public-facing users. Um, so it's sort of the it's it's sort of the opposite of Facebook. Facebook is a sort of social media platform first. And uh, and a sort of messaging with Messenger uh, second. This is the other way around. It's a it's a messaging platform first, and uh, and uh, and a and a, so, and a and a and a sort of social network secondly. On um, Telegram, you can build a following, so you you can ha you can have public channels, and these public channels can have a, a very large numbers of subscribers. Um, and uh, so, so this is how the the celebrities, the internet, the extremist internet celebrities, uh, were um, sort of in some ways planning on using uh, Telegram. It also uh, enables what I like to call um, uh, private sociality. So you can be social in private. So this is a little bit different from the uh, the idea that was put forward uh, by some scholars uh, about how people use uh, 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 Facebook and how public-facing users uh, use it. Uh, this idea of social social privacy. So you can have private so uh, sociality there. So what we did. Um, is in this particular case, we were uh, we considered um, uh, 
whether we wanted to do a kind of datafied digital ethnography or a, a, or a kind of digital methods project, we decided um, that we could scrape uh, Telegram. It's interesting when moving when when beginning to study the alternative social media platforms. These platforms are quite open for researchers, um, and so when you when we when we follow the extremists there, where we move into a space which is not as um, locked down, um, so that was sort of interesting. So we so we built the, the Telegram uh, scraper into a piece of software, which will also be part of one of the tutorials uh, today into into Forecat. Um, in order to study uh, in order to study deplatforming, so <clears throat> what is it? Um, it is the uh, so once once um, these extremist internet celebrities have moved over into Telegram. Um, they are they were deplatformed in one and, and they're replatformed uh, in Telegram, so to speak. But I first want to talk about deplatforming before going into uh, replatforming. So deplatforming is is this idea of, of denying access um, um, to particular users, um, especially extremist internet celebrities these days, but but also others, um, in order to to hold these dangerous individuals accountable. Um, uh, it's also oftentimes met with this idea that you're also denying their capacity to express opinion. So this is a part of the debate about deplatforming. Uh, and the, the question is the extent to which it, it's considers, uh, people consider it to work or not work. And these are the points that are oftentimes made of why uh, deplatforming doesn't work. Um, so it supposedly draws attention to, to materials that are subs, uh, that are suppressed. So it, it gives them, uh, makes them more interesting uh, because uh, uh, it strengthens the conviction of the followers. It creates an aura around forbidden people and ideas. And most famously, I think, is that um, we are concerned that social media companies will become sort of arbiters of speech, that they will be the ones who decide. Where, whereas on the other side of the debate, um, which is very interesting, it is oftentimes argued, and there's some research on this, that deplatforming actually detoxes a particular space, whether it's a, 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 a subreddit, which I'll get to in a second. Uh, other people argue that it detox, detoxes the platform um, because um, the, the users do not migrate internally. They, they, they're gone. Um, it also thins audiences. So, so the audiences for these extremist internet celebrities become drastically reduced. Um, and then it drives these folks um, to spaces with less oxygen giving capacity. So fewer followers, fewer activity, etc. So we decided to actually look into these uh, arguments um, quite, uh, quite specifically and try to operationalize them and turn them into actual questions. And so, so what we did is is a, 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 a number of uh, a number of things to to answer to try to answer these questions. So, does deplatforming actually thin audiences? Are extremists actually driven to spaces with less oxygen giving capacity, or is there oxygen giving capacity in these spaces like Gab, etc.? Um, do these do they become uh, more offensive? So, in their own echo chambers. Uh, do they become even more extremist, or do they mellow? Um, do do the deplatforming platforms, so do, do Facebook, etc., do they become less relevant to extremists, um, or or are they still or are they still important? And then are the alternative ones benefiting from deplatforming? So do, does Gab grow and become more important, or, or and Telegram, etc.? And then finally, this sort of interesting question that we came to um, is: if once these celebrities, when these celebrities are leaving social media, where do they go to? I mean, they go to Telegram, but they also go to the web. They go back to the web, and the question is: is, is the web being revived uh, by these uh, by this deplatforming? So what we did um, is a is a, a project where we looked at the audience counts. So how were these uh, in extremist internet celebrities doing in terms of their audience before and after the deplatforming? We looked at the oxygen giving capacity through activity measures on Telegram. So how frequently were they posting, et cetera? What, what, were they getting a lot of views? 
We looked at um, whether their language was becoming more extremist. We did this by using a uh, sort of a, a hate database, a language database or a lexicon called hatebase.org. Um, and finally, uh, we looked into how, how they discuss uh, the, uh, the platforms that, that threw them off, um, as well as the alternative platforms uh, discursively. And we did that um, through using uh, uh, word trees and keyword and context, et cetera. And I'll show you that briefly. So does deplatforming thin audiences? Uh, the answer to this is yes, and quite uh, massively. So we saw um, a, a steep reduction in, in audience numbers overall for uh, about 15 uh, extremist internet celebrities. So, so bef before where they had uh, a, quite a lot of, well, quite a large audiences on, um, especially on YouTube, but also uh, on Twitter and Instagram, when they moved to, to the, the alternatives, Gab, Telegram, BitChute, Minds, et cetera, the, their, their audience counts uh, really dropped off. Um, but even though they may have dropped off, did these new audiences provide them with oxygen? Uh, in other words, um, did did they did the internet did the extremists still continue to post with great frequency, and were they viewed also with uh, with high counts? And what's interesting is that the um, the extremist celebrities continued to post very very frequently, um, so so they were acting as if they still. Um, had uh, a lot, uh, not only a lot to say, but, but a, lo a, a lot of uh, view counts. Um, and, and what's interesting um, is that it was uh, the, the um, uh, it seemed as if they were getting, uh, well, at least they, they weren't decreasing in their activity. Um, and so perhaps you could say that they still had quite a lot of uh, oxygen in these, in, this, in these new spaces. Um, what we found, however, when looking into whether they, they became more extremist in their language use, um, was we found that they became a bit more mellow. Um, so whilst they, had, they continued to message quite a lot, um, or post quite a lot, and their view counts were increasing, although they did decrease a little bit towards the end of this period, this, the, this period that we looked into uh, from May to October uh, 2019, um, their, the, the, the use of their language um, was quite interesting. So it, it uh, became more mellow. And this is also something that uh, is uh, of, of interest to us. And then um, uh, what about the, the platforms that they were uh, deplatformed from? So Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, etc. cetera. Um, do they become less relevant to the extremists? And therefore, does, is deplatforming good for the platforms that throw them off? Well, what, what we found um, uh, that was, was very interesting to us was that Facebook and Instagram were, were, suddenly were not linked to uh, very often, or they weren't mentioned. So it seems as if Facebook and Instagram became far less relevant uh, to these uh, celebrities than they were before. However, Twitter and YouTube remained extremely re relevant, even though they were thrown off from there. Uh, so, so, uh, so, so deplatforming isn't necessarily um, might might be good for uh, Instagram and uh, and uh, Facebook, but not necessarily so much for for Twitter and YouTube. They still become they still are, are highly relevant. Um, and what, um, and uh, so so why is it that that extremists still are very interested in YouTube and Twitter and not in Facebook and Instagram any longer? We we looked into that as well, um, discursively. Uh, so we took uh, in in the in the we downloaded all of the posts by the extremist internet celebrities on on Telegram. And then we queried these for the names of the platforms, both mainstream platforms as well as alternative platforms. And when we looked at how they discuss Facebook, um, it's, it's all about disgust. So it's all about how f uh, f uh, Facebook is no, no longer relevant to the, to the extremists. Um, and when we looked uh, at, at Twitter, however, um, uh, whilst they're unhappy that they were deplatformed from Twitter, they, they still urge 
their, um, the other users to, to tweet about them on Twitter and, to, and to, to continue to use Twitter. So Twitter remains relevant, whereas Facebook does not. YouTube is also remains uh, relevant um, to them. Um, and it and, and it's, and it's also continues to be a space where they want to appear, uh, they, sort of they want to be co-hosted or they want to appear on there or otherwise they're still sending traffic to YouTube by discussing other others who are still on who are still on YouTube. Um, and the question of the alternatives. So, which of the alternatives, or are the alternatives benefiting? Are they are they growing? Um, are they becoming more significant because the the celebrities have moved there or, or and have been de deplatformed? And how are these uh, extremist celebrities talking about these platforms? Well, what's interesting is um, um, most all of them, so, so BitChute, Gab, um, Minds, Parlay, all of them are being used instrumentally. So they, they're, ju they're just trying to point their users to them. Um, whereas Telegram, so, uh, so but this is an example. So, so it's just um, so just go to BitChute because because YouTube is, uh, is is censoring our material, and that's also where Soph's video that I just showed you uh, is is uh, is located. Now it's on BitChute, uh, but they all of all of the mentions of these alternative platforms are, are basically instrumental. Um, same with Gab. Uh, so, so it's it's just I'm on there. You can you can go and uh, uh, follow me there, etc. Uh, whereas Telegram uh, is kind of different. They, they, they feel as if Telegram is the, it provides them with a kind of soft landing spot, uh, a, a place also where they also communicate with one another, uh, et cetera. So, so Telegram has a sort of, is, is, has a special, special, um, is a special place for these, uh, for these ex uh, extremists. And, um, so so um, we then endeavored to try to make the kind of first map of the alternative uh, social media ecology after deplatforming. Um, and so we did this uh, um, basically manually. So we, we took about uh, 20 uh, extremist internet celebrities and, and looked for which, which platforms, mainstream platforms they're still on and, uh, and which uh, ones that they've uh, migrated to and then created, so this is, um, this is an al this is the, the alternative social media ecology, at least a, a, according to um, the sort of fifteen or twenty extremist internet celebrities that were deplatformed in, in May in May 2019. And what's interesting about it um, is uh, uh, and 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 other internet uh, other extremist celebrities that weren't deplatformed. That's why of. Um, uh, you see uh, some of these mainstream ones there, but but um, certain. So you may have been deplatformed from Twitter, but not from YouTube, etc. So this is why the mainstream ones are there. So YouTube is still quite central. Uh, so is Twitter, but you see um, like Facebook and Instagram are, are quite marginal. Uh, you, you you also see that the um, Telegram, Bitshoot, Minds, Gab, they're, they're quite central. Uh, but also, you see personal websites uh, as also being quite central. Um, so, this led us to the to the sort of strange thought of of ironically, so so if social media uh, killed the web when they deplatform inter extremist internet celebrities, uh, and the inter and they these celebrities sort of go elsewhere, they're now going back to the web in some sense, reviving it. Um, I just want to conclude <clears throat> with uh, uh, with a, with a, with Milo. He's a quite a famous sort of alt light uh, character, um, and and he has a lot to say about um, various platforms uh, after he's been deplatformed from from Twitter and, and Facebook and Instagram. Um, so he is not happy in this new space, um, in this new alternative social media ecology. Um, he um, can't put food on the table. Uh, he talks about Gab as um, re relentlessly, exhaustingly hostile and jam-packed full of teen racists. He talks about Parley. Parley is zero interaction. No one is there. He talks about Telegram as a wasteland. Um, 
he, uh, he says that he might have to leave social media altogether. So this is, this is, a, this is, um, this is to some uh, sort of quite hard evidence that deplatforming in some sense works or is effective. Um, we, we, we looked at it, of course, uh, more empirically. But, but um, the larger question of whether it's good for, um, so it might be good for certain platforms. So it appears to be good for, Instagram and Facebook, not necessarily so good for YouTube and Twitter. Um, it's not that good for the, uh, for the alternative uh, social media platforms, with the, with the one exception of Telegram, at least uh, according to our empirical work. Um, and, uh, but does it benefit um, society at large? Um, this is something that we didn't get into. Um, we, we discussed so-called cancel culture um, and the extent to which this canceling of extremist celebrities by social media companies like the canceling of a television program, um, whether, whether, whether such, such uh, ca cancel cultures is, is good for society or not, uh, we left that, that larger question uh, open. So in some... Um, uh, when uh, so, so social media platforms have made these extremist celebrities in some ways, and now they're unmaking them. Um, so, uh, and it seems to be, as I mentioned before, it seems to be effective for certain of these mainstream uh, social media platforms, and uh, not for others. Um, and what, is, what we find interesting in the replatforming and their move to the alternative social media ecology, and also their move to the web is the question of whether they're mellowing. Um, and we found that their language became less extreme. Uh, maybe, as Milo said, it's because the, the spaces that they went into themselves, those spaces were more extreme even than. Uh, but, but nevertheless, um, uh, so that was one interesting question of whether, whether the mellowing, uh, the, the general mellowing of these, ex, uh, of these extremists in these spaces could be said to uh, be an indication that, uh, that it's sort of good for the internet, good for the detoxification of the internet. However, they are moving a lot of this, their, their vile content uh, to the web. Um, and creating a sort of all, um, sort of sub subscription platform. So, like they're, they're also beginning to to use uh, the the uh, the web again um, to uh, as a as a as as a uh, as a kind of toxic space. So, in that sense, it might not be so great uh, for the internet. Um, that's it. Thanks very much.